what is eugenics? Eugenics is a very important topic or, or concept to grasp and understand. And again, something we'll add to our vocabulary because this will, this will pertain directly to some mythologies that we're going to talk about. It's a very important mythology. So I wanted to get a grip on what this concept was and how it has actually affected us in life already. Now, eugenics is a set of beliefs and practices that aim to improve the genetic quality of the human populace. And this is typically by excluding people and or groups who are judged to be inferior or unfit and by promoting groups that we would deem to be superior groups. If we look at eugenics and how it has affected the world, we have to start in its ancient times. We're talking about the foundation of Western civilization. We obviously look to the Greeks. And in this case, we're going to look at the Greek philosopher Plato, who expounded on the idea of human reproduction being controlled by the state. But Plato knew that this form of government would not be readily accepted and proposed that this truth be held withheld from the public and that they would manipulate elections in order to get this process done and he wanted to control uh, marriages and have this whole idea about analyzing genetic inheritance other ancient civilizations such as rome athens and sparta practiced infanticide on a regular basis they had trials for infant children who were typically bathed in wine and often left out to the exposure of nature to see which children would ultimately survive and those were deemed to be the strongest and those weaker children were allowed to die out and according to the 12 tables of roman law which was at the earliest foundation of the roman republic stated that deformed children should be put to death or must be put to death and in addition to that fathers were given the right to disregard infants at their own discretion Sir Francis Galton, who lived from 1822 to 1911, wrote a theory of, of hereditary talent and character, and he elaborated the idea of controlling human development by judging morals, intelligence, and personality traits that he thought tended to run in certain uh, families. And, and he regarded genius and talent as hereditary traits that could be passed down and controlled. And early advocates of eugenics consider it as a viable way to improve the populace. In modern usage, the term eugenics has very, very close ties to scientific racism and modern white supremacy. Modern bioethnics who advocate new eugenics describe it as a way of enhancing human traits regardless of group membership. In the early 20th century, it emerged in the United Kingdom and spread from there to other countries, including the United States, Canada, and for a large degree, most Euro European countries, some form of eugenics at, at some time. And in this period, eugenics was espoused across the political spectrum, thus this being a viable tool. Consequently, many countries adopted eugenics policies intended to improve the quality of their population's genetic stock. And such programs included both positive measures by rewarding individuals that it deemed as particularly fit to reproduce and taking net negative measures against those deemed unfit, including marriage prohibitions and forced sterilizations. Now, eugenics for the most part in modern times has typically been associated with Nazi Germany and the Holocaust because of how big the scope of what they were doing was. It's very important to know that they were attempting to completely remove both physically and mentally unfit from their own populace, including their own people, but also they were rooting out the so-called Jewish line and anything that was black i mean this was a very racist program so it's difficult to look at their science and not be heavily influenced by the fact that they were blatantly and out of their way to be racist even with their own science so we saw that this had taken root obviously in germany but this was a practice that had existed in the united states think about what the united states did when they first landed here and settled on this nation it was a massive eugenics program genocide is also a key component to what eugenics is and this is a this is a an ideology that latched into the united states in the early 1880s and it was sir francis galton who first went out and developed this concept of improving humans and using the term that was the the well-born these were the highly respected people these were the ones that you you wanted to to uh, produce 
And since this time, we've seen all these various technologies, and now technology plays a part in what we see as, as eugenics, as it always was very fit to do. If we look at gestational uh, surrogacy, which has been available since 1985, pre-implant genetic diagnosis has been available since 1989. Cytoplasmic transfer has been available since 1996 and all this just adds to a greater temptation and ability to influence the genetics of the populace on a much broader scale. Now of course the biggest criticisms of genetic of eugenics typically comes from the negative policies and the high susceptibility for abuse of power especially when one particular group is in, in power as it often is in most parts of the world and use that to justify themselves also being seen as higher genetics even though at times they may be of inferior genetic stock themselves and we see that societies often associate things such as wealth or political influence as higher genetics but that's those are not necessarily the things that nature is going to reward let's not forget that key to the development of the united states was the labor force that they had in these slaves who they bred for bigger stronger faster and we see that in in our way in some of our modern sports so the the united states has been one of the biggest most effective eugenics program that the world has ever seen they completely or very nearly wiped out several lines of native americans their line will never exist on this planet again they changed the genetics of this country they did that and they introduced African genetics or reintroduced African genetics depending on how you see the line of Africans leading into the Americas. And at times we've seen even African intelligent African American leaders who've embraced the idea of eugenics for their own community. W.E.B. Du Bois who was a historian and great civil rights leaders had some beliefs that lined up with eugenics. He believed that for the, the best version of African Americans to exist, he needed the best of males and females to be the ones who bred and for the worst of them to be the ones who did not breed. Thomas Wyatt Turner, who was a professor at Howard University and a well-respected scientist, also incorporated the idea of eugenics into his classes. But eugenics has often faced stout opposition. Uh, strong has always been the Catholic Church, who at almost every level encourages their followers to to be prosperous and to breed and to have more and more kids and that is what their way is obviously being very much against the use of birth control which is a key component of what eugenics has and if we look at their battles they've taken up that battle fighting against Planned Parenthood who has been accused at many instances of eugenics programs attempting in many cases to reduce the populace of the African American community with the Negro Plan which came out in 1969. One of the key components of eugenics is the loss of genetic diversity. It, we have to understand that as a species it has been the diversity of mankind that has been its strength. It allows us to develop traits physically and mentally to cope with the various conditions that the planet around us gives us. Thank you again for stopping in. We'll explore more concepts like eugenics as we look at how it affects both our history and especially in our case, our mythology. Please check our YouTube channel for more videos that link to some of this information. And thank you again for stopping in at Narwhal Chronicles. Please like and subscribe.